ladies and gentlemen, Paul Williams. Since, uh, since it uh, happened to come up, Paul, uh, do performers uh, in general pay any attention to what uh, critics have to say? I try to keep a single-edged razor right close to the bed, you know. <laughs> uh, I don't take the kind of chances you just took, you know, that generally I... Uh, but it does severe emotional damage, you know, when somebody says uh, that Paul Williams is a real, you know, at best, uh, Carol Lindley look-alike who's, you know... <laughs> boring to be around and uh, you do look like her though have you ever seen us together at the same time <laughs> they're passing out valium incidentally in the green room like they were m&m's you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that kind of you know you know with the blades and you know, i'm not part of the fisher and razor blade set i you know i get, <laughs> you know uh, I don't. I don't enjoy, you know, seeing exposed blades and things like that. You know, even in the movies. You know. Well, is that as when you when you were a youngster, did you get into, you know, kinds of fights and things like that? Is that why you're nervous? Yeah. Well, I found out it, it's amazing. You had a martial arts. I developed my own specific form of martial arts with uh, a fellow named Jeffrey Commodore. Uh I used to get beat up when I was a kid because I'm. It's hard to tell on television, but I'm not as tall as you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm only like about 5'9", and... <laughs> Standing on a five-foot box. By that, I'm, I'm the only person that's ever appeared on this show that probably, you know, met the height qualifications, you know. 19-inch <laughs> variety show. All the way down. Yeah, but... yeah. I, I, I found something very unique about, about my childhood. I moved around all the time. I was generally the the shortest kid and also the new kid you know in, in town and i discovered that i never got beat up during the winter time and it was because i always had a runny nose you know <laughs> really you know people would go oh god <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't touch that with a winchester you know uh, and i'd say yeah mess with me i'll be out of jail for you out of the hospital I'd bounce around and everything and i realized you know they're afraid of me because i'm disgusted <laughs> So, Jeffrey Commoner, who is a strange songwriter, who, uh, he's a member of the, there's a mutant club in, in uh, Hollywood. Freddie Prince is a member, Jeffrey Commoner, there are a few of us who sit around, you know, after midnight and do bizarre things. We developed a... Uh, <laughs> Runny noses. <laughs> <laughs> that was the beginning of it. A true, we decided that there were true Kung Fiti. We called it Kung Fiti, you know. Kung Fiti Masters. Now, a Kung Fiti Master, the first thing he learns to do is to have a runny nose on command. You know, you just get in a dangerous thing. You learn to do things like make yourself sick. You know, that, rub it on your chest and then attempt to embrace your adversary, saying things like, come to mama. And it's, uh, beyond that, it just gets too weird for television. <laughs> Even, you know, for these two people, it's too strange, you know. Yeah, when, when, you were, when you were a youngster, before you were a, a star, Paul, I guess when you were a youngster, I was going to say when you were smaller. But um, that really doesn't matter. <laughs> when did, I was about that high. Um, what kind of uh, relationships did you have with women? Did you ever have any luck with women? I wonder because of the kind of music that you write. I believe that, that we've approached a place in society right now where women are, you know, like, the whole thing is to be, you know, if, you're, if you're a threat, you know, women move away from that. And I've always thought of myself as kind of an erotic teddy bear, you know. I, I don't feel that I pose a real threat, you know, and I, you know, you know, cuddliness is my, you know, that's my gig. And uh, I've always liked girls better than boys. That's a, a, a physical preference, not a moral judgment, you know, I just, those are the, Bef I like them better. Before you were successful, did you have much success with women? No, I had, uh, God, in those days, it was so bad I had to get married. Uh, well, then after... <laughs> no, I, I, I have always felt that, you know, I, occasionally, like, I, I took out Connie Stevens once, you know, and I thought, me, here I am dating Connie Stevens, and I thought, Connie, what if I was sacking groceries at the Safeway? Would you be going out with me, you know? And by that, you know, the, just the concept of that, she left, I went home alone. 
Paul, you mentioned cuddly teddy bear. If you had a choice, is that the image you'd choose for yourself, kind of like the Pillsbury Doughboy, just, you know, a little squishy? I honestly came to this town to be an actor. I truly believed that I, you know, that I was like the Montgomery Clift of the 60s and 70s. I, I find that, you know, just because you feel like him, you don't happen to look like him, you know. I, and Hollywood had one Frankie Darrow, you know. But when, when we come back, well, we're going to take a commercial break now, Paul, but when we come back, I'd like to pursue that business of the kind of image you thought you had yes. in order to want to become an actor. Right. We'll be right back after this message. Oh, getting back to that question, what kind of image did you think you had when you were trying to break into motion pictures? I sense that there was a certain animal magnetism that, you know, could not be denied. Uh, I've really always gotten along well with ladies. I, you know, I think uh, ladies sense honesty. First of all, when a lady is treated like a lady, and I don't mean to get into a, a chauvinistic thing, you know, I don't want her, you know, in the kitchen, I'd rather have somebody cooking for us and bring it up, you know, uh, so we can be able to spend a little more time alone. I've always gotten along well with ladies, and I write about the more the gentler sides of, of a relationship. You know, I think that that the really delicate thing in a man-woman relationship is that you know you found somebody. I think a woman knows she's found somebody when he will, for example, cry in front of her. She knows her man is secure enough in his masculinity to be that honest. And, and blow just, his nose. And blow his nose, you know. <laughs> I just put that in, into my music, you know. But I've always gotten along with, with ladies, and I hope to continue. But but now that you're you're a star, though, because you were saying before about you know you didn't have that easy a time with them. But now that you're a star, they would be all over you. I mean, how do you know whether to accept them or reject them because they're coming after you because you're Paul? I reject William. them if they have, if they need a shave, you know. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I say, I reject you, you need a shave. No, I, I, I love it. We're just, in the last six to months to a year, we're starting to get that thing with the audience that is going, that is going, yeah! And I go, yeah, backwards. It's wonderful. I love it. I'll tell you, Paul, what Brian and I did when you left that uh, note upstairs for me, which was very nice for you. We took it down to a lady named Kitty White, who is a graphologist, and we just had, just for kicks, we, you know, uh, we had her analyze, uh, God, I had, had her rush. analyze her handwriting. <laughs> She gave us. She gave us. She gave us an hour and a half reading on you. It was incredible. You know, the word "little" showed up about sixty-five times in uh, in, in in the reading, and so we, we just yes, we're just taking the highlights out of it. Uh, she says that you were an optimist. She said that you were highly emotional, and that if you did get into a bad mood, you wouldn't be afraid to uh, let your nose run. Um, no, she said that you wouldn't be afraid to display that. Uh, she says you're incredibly sensitive, and even your closest friends may not realize how sensitive you are, and that you're able to overcome resentments easily. Is that fairly accurate so far? <laughs> That's, that, as a matter of fact, is very accurate. Uh, she says you're a lot like uh, Tom Sawyer in Huckleberry Finn. Uh, Better that than Becky, you know. <laughs> She says that, uh, that uh, you can make a big deal out of small things. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> she says, uh, you know, if, if you were doing commercials, you'd be great for the guy in the stagecoach in the gravy train commercial. Uh, no, 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 you know what would be a good commercial for you? Rowing the boat in tidy ball. Can I use that? Yeah. And, and then, no, they can use your you're song. Right and no, Paul, they can use your song while you're rowing. We've only just begun to flush. The flush. Yeah. Uh, she says you're very intuitive. Uh, she says that you communicate easily and that age and sex are no barrier, that you can be with anyone from 9 to 90. Two people from 9 to 90 is even better. <laughs> you are ambitious and you think big. You love music have imagination and rhythm and she says details are uh, beyond you she says you're a little unpredictable love physical activity could be a master in any sport except maybe really? basketball <laughs> uh, she said that you could bad be... knees they're too close to the ground <laughs> <laughs> you'd be in labor relations and however this is the last thing she said if you had a background in music 
an incredible performer. So I said, you know whose handwriting you're analyzing? And she said, who? And I said, Paul Williams. And she said, who's Paul Williams? <laughs> is that remarkable? Well, that's mine. Well, that's... Yeah. Well, Kitty, uh, now you know who Paul Williams is, and you're going to see one of the most incredible composers, songwriters, performers in the business right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Williams. Thank Paul. You. Thank you. Peeler conducting for me. This is a new song. Loneliness takes the romance out of falling stars, fills the wishing wells and fills the bars, run and hide the sky. Loneliness Loneliness Makes a winter's night Seem twice as long Makes the summer sunlight Much too strong Nothing's really wrong It's only loneliness So stay a while We both have stories That are hungry to be told Your eyes are warm But I can feel your hands are cold And still the nice to hold it only takes a simple yes The time we spend leaves that much less For loneliness Like a love song Or an old cliche Has its hideouts But it's never far away Look around, you found it it's only loneliness So stay a while We've worn the night away And now it's almost done If you could stay A bit of breakfast might be fun It's too much work for one and Though it's just a simple guess we're stronger now, we made the best of loneliness Waits in silence while the shadows grow Waits and wonders if it's finally time to go The yes in our hello said no to loneliness Williams.